Stop with this one piece of paper, polynomial. Polynomial. Polynomials. A polynomial is nothing more than something that has terms. <coughs> For example, if I have this, if I have x squared plus 2x plus 6, I think we've discussed this at length many times. What is a term, and how many terms do you see there? Maybe we haven't discussed this, maybe I'm thinking of something else, but what is a term, how do we know something's a term, and how many terms do you see there? Nick is speculating what? There are two Nick says two, and Nick would be way wrong. Nick is now saying three terms, and he might be right. How do I know is the question, Nick. Because x squared is 2x's, just in case. Nah, nah, you're off on that. We've got nothing to do with that. Nikki, call. Um, each term is separated by like a um, addition or subtraction sign. Exactly. A term can be anything, any, this is x, x squared times, or x times x, that's what x squared is. You can multiply and still have one term. Terms are separated by addition and subtraction signs. This has three terms. And they are separated by pluses and minuses, addition and subtractions. Okay? So that's a three term thing. This is one term, that's a second term, that's a. A polynomial really means many terms. And for right now, we just need to remember this we have what's called a monomial. And if you know anything about whatever, mono means one. A monomial is just a one term thing. For example, uh, x. x is just one term. Uh, or you could have 5xyz. That is one term. This is all multiplication together, but there's no addition subtraction signs between there, so that makes it one term. You could have uh, just the number 15, one term. Okay. Um, like when it says separated by a plus or minus, why is it division and multiplication? Because the division and multiplication come together and be one thing. I, just, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that. It's just it's addition subtraction. Okay. In addition to that, we have what's called a binomial. And you know that bi means two. So two terms is a binomial. You could have x plus three has two terms. One of them are separated by this. You could have five x squared y z minus 12x. Two terms, one addition subtraction sign. Could I have five x plus three x? Technically, no, because those two terms could be put together because they're like terms, resulting, if you simplify this, 5x's and 3x's just give you 8x's. If you can simplify it, you must do that. This is just a monomial because it always ends up being one term when it's simplified. Binomial, I can't put these together. Two terms, still two terms. And then when you get one like this, that is a trinomial which is simply three terms. And again, if I could combine some of these, I would, and it would change it, but I can't. I can't put an x squared with a 2x, and I can't put a 2x with a 6, or a 6 with an x squared. Trinomial, three terms separated, each one by an addition subtraction sign. I could put a minus in front of that, that doesn't change the number of terms. There's still just three terms, because that negative goes with the x squared. Okay. After that, we don't go into quadnomials. There's no such thing as a pentanomial or anything like that. We usually just go 
monomial, binomial, trinomial, and then if something had four terms, you'd say it's a four-term polynomial, whatever it is. Well, actually, did we talk about that? Yeah, maybe not. Now, questions on that so far, because we've yet, we've yet begun to fight on polynomials. Okay, perfect. Now, in addition to that, polynomials have degrees. They have what we call degrees. And before we talk about degrees of polynomials, we have to talk about degrees of a term. A single term, let's just say it is 3x squared. Let's say that's my term. It's a one term, it's a monomial over right here actually. Okay, here is how you tell the degree of a term. Okay, the degree of a term The degree of a term is equal to the sum of all the exponents of the variables. Not emphasize this exponents of numbers which we call constants. Now, that was a lot of words for something that's incredibly easy to understand. The degree of this term is simply 2, because you add up all the exponents of all the letters, which only has one letter, which only has one exponent, so this is a second degree term. <coughs> okay. If I had um, 6x squared y cubed z, and I asked you for the degree of that monomial, you add the exponents together. This one's not there, but it's a 1. It's not there. 2 plus 3 plus 1, this is a 6 degree term. Now I'm going to try to catch on this one. What if I have 5 squared x, y, z? The degree of that term is, Jeremy, is just to the third, it's a third degree term. Jeremy, why isn't it a fifth degree term? Because it says in this not to add the exponents. Right. This doesn't count, simply because you can take 5 squared and make it 25. And it's only the exponents of the letters, of the variables. And there are three, one, two, three. It's a third degree thing. Jackson? Oh, now, the degree of a polynomial, this one will really get you going. The degree of a polynomial is equal to its highest degree term. Anybody know what that means? No, that's why we do examples. The degree of a polynomial is equal to the degree of its highest degree term. So let me write down a polynomial. Let's say I have 7x squared y plus 15xy plus 6y. The first thing that you do is figure out what the degree of each term is. This first term, what's the degree of that, Johnny? X, 7x squared y, what's the degree of this first term? Two with the x and one with the y, is, this is a third degree term. What's the degree of that second term? Fred? 
Yep, it's a second degree term. And what's the degree of the third term? Hannah Newton? It's in the first degree. The, first degree. the degree of the polynomial is equal to the degree of the highest degree term. In other words, this was a 3, that's a 2, that's a 1. You find the highest degree term, and that's the degree of the polynomial. This is a third degree polynomial. You don't add all of these up together and get 6. You don't do that. You just look at the one that has the highest degree, and that's the one we put as the degree of the polynomial. And usually, usually we try to order the polynomial in descending order of the degrees of the terms. In other words, I put the biggest degree term first, then the next one, and then the next one. That's just kind of the way that math people like to do it for no other reason than just to be organized. Wow is all I can say to that. Just absolutely positively wow. Brandon, do you have a question? How would you tell if it's the highest degree term? Is it just because? Because this was a 3 and that's a 2 and that's a 1 and I know that 3 is higher than 2 and 1. I mean it's the highest, it's the highest one that's out there. How about this? Let's do this problem here. Write this down. 5 minus 4x squared plus x cubed um, minus 6x. First thing first, what is the degree of that polynomial? What is the degree of that polynomial? Lucas Espanol. Three. Correct. It's a third degree polynomial. And then the book says to arrange the terms in order from greatest to least based on the degree of each term. So what term should go first? The highest degree term, which is the x cubed. When you write this on your paper, you should always put the x cubed term first followed by the minus 4x squared, because that's a second degree term, followed by the minus 6x, which is the first degree, and the 5, which has no degree at all. I don't know if that's called the zeroth degree term, but that's what it is. Um, in descending order, biggest to smallest, third degree polynomial. Now please ask me when you'll use this. Zero idea. <laughs> I couldn't even speculate. As a matter of fact, they, they, they probably right. won't even ask you a question about it. That's just the way it works. I can't change 